255 here. What up, Deep Buzz? Looking at this Guilty Gear developer's backyard. This is my first time looking at the site with you. So let's dive in. They uh, first thank everybody who's going to participate or who took part in the open beta test for Guilty Gear Strive. This time they are looking at the data that was gathered from the open beta test. So 51,000 responses to the survey. Let's see what they're going to say. Which character did you use the most during the open beta? Wow. Ram Lethal is number one in Japan, North America, Europe, and Oceania. Which character did you like the most in Guilty Gear Strive? And Ram Lethal is the favorite in Japan, Asia, North America, South America, Europe, and Oceania. I'll be honest with you. I was, I, I liked, I was impressed with Ram Lethal when I played the last uh, version of Guilty Gear. She was a lot harder there, but in Guilty Gear Strive, she looks a lot more simple. And I was watching Sonic Fox versus Goichi, and I seen the way that she was safely able to dish out so much damage with her normals, even long range. Those, those big giant swords there, and definitely my first thought was I want to main her, so I'm not surprised. She's got great normals, and when there are great normals, there are usually top tier characters. She does heavy damage, even in her trailer, I could tell. So nothing surprising about that at all. Uh, Soul and Kai, obviously, they're the Ryu and Ken here. Giovanna kind of surprised me. Because she had this kind of King of Fighters feel, although, I don't know. I guess some people might be excited about that. Nakaruki, our vampire character with the stroke, was fifth consistently across Japan to Oceania. As far as which character they use the most. I'm not surprised by that, though. I am not surprised by that at all all right katano we asked for the characters everyone played the most in their favorite separately but the answers were more or less similar for both ram lethal is extremely popular in every region it seems so make more make more please rate the following modes all right so versus mode was very good Tutorial mode was looked at as mostly average. Some people said bad, some people said very bad. Uh, I guess that's... It looks like most people looked at the network online lobby mode as very bad. That's a big red spot there. That's not that good. I'm not surprised by that. And we know that, you know... So I'm not playing Street Fighter Five now. This is garbage. Training mode, very good. Okay, well, that, that, that's hopeful. So what they said is that the tutorial mode received mixed reactions. So let's look back up. Uh, some said good. Some said very good. That doesn't look very mixed to me. Oh, no, no. They said tutorial mode. I see it. That's mixed. I'm looking at training mode. All right. My bad. Uh, tutorial mode received mixed reactions. Some praise it for the unique freedom it gives the player as opposed to the traditional textbook style explanation. Others, however, point out that it lacks the explanations needed for an introduction to the game. I think a game like Guilty Gear really needs a good tutorial. I don't know how much they've toned down the mechanics from the last one. I can kind of, I definitely know it's easier from playing the last one. Strive is definitely easy than X hard. No ifs, ands, and maybes about that. I could just tell from watching it, but um, Guilty Gear is definitely a game that needs a tutorial. Well, fighting games in general, but especially Guilty Gear. All right, in our previous games, players new to the fighting genre would need to put in some practice in order to complete the tutorial. We checked the result data and replayed from the first floor of the rank tower and saw many matches were neither played use special moves or every game mechanic. We will brush up on the finer aspects of this mode, but for the most part, we felt this style of tutorial was successful. Even though the largest thing on tutorial says average. All right, well. Also in the finished game, 
The mission mode will include missions for practicing game mechanics such as wall break and Roman cancels, combos for each character, as well as a variety of techniques. Players who want to delve deep into the various mechanics to level up their game can look forward to that. I feel like mission mode is good and it's... I played mission mode in a bunch of um, Guilty Gear games before. And I feel like it's more single player content filler. It could be part of the tutorial mode. It's not bad. It's certainly, oh, it, it could take on a life of its own. Certainly, it's definitely in depth enough. And I guess maybe they want tutorial mode to be uh, seen as easy to grasp for players who are new to it. So they probably don't want tutorial mode to be too big and I can get that um, but when you play mission mode you still kind of figure that out so I guess it's just a way to trick new players but for long time players like myself and others it's not we already know what the deal is <clears throat> also in the finished game the mission mode will include missions for practicing game mechanics such as wall break and roman cancels combos for each character as well as a variety of techniques. Players who want to delve deeper into the various mechanics to level up the game can look forward to that. Okay. All my lobby is the area from the test we need to most work on and have determined needs to be improved before release. Even aside from the server issues, it was difficult to use and hard to understand how it worked, although we continually worked on eternal improvements following last year's closed beta test. We realized that we let everyone down. Here are some plans we have to fix the issues. Changing to a system where players select a visible area where they want to have a match. After winning a match, the player stays where they are in battle ready state, unless the ratings changes. Adding a rematch option. Expanding the area in each lobby. Adding an option to hide the news display and adding a dash movement for avatars. How about you just scrap the lobby system that everybody was complaining about. I don't know why game developers get like these little like toddler modes where everyone says something sucks and they're like, no, we're gonna stick with it. And everyone hates that. I don't know why they do this. I guess it's so they're not completely controlled by fans. I don't know what the theory is behind it, but it, it, it's, it's awful. Cut it out. All right. So they asked on opinions for several aspects of the game, character visuals, character animations, state graphics, round start, windscreen visuals, vision direction, battle effects, battle system, BGM, sound effects, and voices. Everything is mostly very good, and, and no one's surprised by that. Um, I'm, I'm surprised people said that the windscreen visuals aren't that great. <laughs> like uh, Rufo Monger said, we have some edge lords on the character visuals. All right, let's see what Katano has to say. First, regarding the visuals and effects, we received many comments stating that the game looks good, but there are issues with visibility. Now, I've been watching this game for a while. I didn't see too many, so what are we talking about here? In particular, many players encountered issues with characters building into the background and being difficult to see as well as losing track of the character's positions due to the camera effects. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> I didn't see that problem at all. Let's discuss the battle system. This covers so many topics that it may have been difficult to answer on the survey. Answers on this topic had the most variation depending on what other games players have experienced with in their region. Let's take a look at some of the most frequently mentioned key phrases from everyone's answers. The damage is too high. Before I even read what is said here, let me comment. You know, I love fighting games. I also love MMORPGs. I having fun making these YouTube videos. This is new for me. But one thing I don't like doing is not having enough time to play and enjoy the game. And when the damage is high, that means combos don't have to be too unnecessarily complicated. And I think that's a good thing. I think that uh, 
fighting games should be simpler so that more people will play it because the reason why I guess maybe fighting games and esports aren't as high as they could be is because the difficulty, the entry level for it is it's too much for people. It's too much. And so if we want the FGC to grow and have more players and we have more people to play with even in our local community as well as online because the more money hopefully the better products in some cases that's definitely not been the case and uh, we can think of a company like EA <coughs> anyway uh, Capcom recently <coughs> sometimes when companies get bigger they uh, you know anyway but those are my thoughts on the damage is too high before I read this and my mind is influenced I just want to say we want more players in the FGC. You want new content creators. So let's take the time and make this a little bit more simpler. It doesn't mean that you can't have depth because of simplicity, right? Like you look at Final Fantasy VII's material system. It's simple, but there's a lot of depth into it. And that's what makes Street Fighter great. It can, you can play it simply, right? Jump, hard kick, medium, Hadouken. Right, but there's a lot of aspects that go into that. anti airs right? You're gonna time it right. You know, there's a lot of different things that go into those choices. So it's like that's what we want to do. You know, simple but deep. So let's look at this. The damage is too high. Many players commented that the damage is way too high. There were also many concerns that this is not just a problem with the game's balance, but also takes away the fun of pulling off damaging combos. After hearing your feedback, we plan to adjust the damage so that it's more suitable for how often and how difficult it is to land each attack. Okay, that's that's fair. In general, however, the damage will remain high as that is part of Guilty Gear Strive's design. Good. It could be said that part of the appeal of the Guilty Gear series is the tension and exhilaration felt during fast-paced matches and previous titles, however. The player could only experience this after practicing and learning complicated combos, okay? Did I just say that? And I didn't read it. Thank you. The length of the average combo is much shorter in Guilty Gear Strive so that more players than before can experience this. This is why the overall damage is set high, including for single hits, and I'm so happy that I stated that I said what I said before I read this, okay? I did not read this. Yeah, uh, you can believe it, take it or not, but that was what my common sense told me. And guess what? The developers think the same thing. Hire me on your team. 255's got your back. This is why the overall damage is set high, including for single hits. There are also other elements influenced by this direction, such as our reconsideration of the frequency of the combos in general. All right, number two, let's just skip down. Roman cancels are interesting, but I felt limited by meter use. Fans of the previous Guilty Gear games in particular had positive things to say about Roman cancels. At the same time, many mentioned feeling restricted because the round would finish before they could use Roman cancels how they like. Taking this into consideration, we have reconsidered the general rules surrounding meter game. We didn't simply increase the game rate, but you should be able to use your meter more freely overall. All right, that's fine. You know, th th there's that simple but deaf thing I talked about. Jumping is too strong. Mm. Many players felt that the neutral game was lacking due to grounded anti-airs being too weak, while aerial options were too strong, making jumping a common choice. We also determined that this needed improvement and have made significant changes. I can't explain each individual change here, but this is one point that will be very noticeable difference from the open beta test. Okay. All right, that's, uh, meh, meh. I'm fine with grounded battles. I uh, I play a lot of uh, fighting games and uh, especially Dragon Ball Fighters. There's people like to like hang in the air Four, get rid of infinites. Some characters had access to infinite combos. In addition, there were notable instances of overly simple combo structures. We are planning to deal with this by adjusting the game mechanics in addition to the character balance so that these combos don't end up as the most viable option. For example, hitting an opponent with the same move more than a set number of times will make them float less. 
This set number will be different depending on the move. We don't want to completely get rid of all the combos, so we choose to increase the ways we can balance the game. All right. <clears throat> and then we have next, please rate the comfort of online battle. And that blue bar is what it is about. Because man, you've heard me complain about Street Fighter Netcode in the videos, I'm not gonna do it. So let's just read what Katano has to say. The rollback netcode was highly praised and we saw many matches between different countries and regions. However, in some instances, matches could become quite unstable, sometimes becoming incredibly slowed down. We'll be working on adjustments and improvements as the game release approaches. To get a bit deeper on this topic, during the test we had to input delay fix that one frame. Perhaps due to their experience from previous Guilty Gear games, some players confused the rollback frames displayed for the input delay. However, the input delay was locked at one frame. As mentioned in the previous backyard, we are still looking into whether we should allow the player to set their input delay based on the network connection and how to handle fields between network connection strength. We are hoping to conduct another beta test after fixing the bugs and improving the gaming systems. So we are planning to make these decisions after looking at the results from that test. Fine, whatever. It's just better than what it's been and that's all we've been asking for. It looks like about the end. They're playing an open second open beta test. Timing is yet to be determined. And that's all for value five. I really appreciate these little newsletter things. Anyway, I've talked a lot as it is. This is DeepMind255, out.